Hey, what's up, folks? So not long ago, we launched NX's new major version, version 17. Since then, we've already had two minor releases, 17.1 and 17.2. And in this video, we're going to discuss all the changes that have happened since version 17 that have landed now in 17.2. There's a lot of things to cover, so let's get right into it. All right, so first up is new simplified project configuration is on its way. If you've been following along with NX news, you've noticed that we've introduced a lot of improvements for NX, particularly along the lines of introducing NX into an existing workspace. Pretty much all you have to do to enable NX is install the NX package, or if you have NX installed globally on your machine, you can run NX init, and that's going to initialize everything that you need in order for NX to work properly. NX can find all of your pre-existing package.json files, identify all the scripts, and translate these to tasks for NX to run inside of its task pipeline. This enables some powerful capabilities for your workspace right out of the box, like task caching, for example. But it's really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of all the power that NX can give to your workspace. In order to unlock the full power, you had to install our NX plugins. However, there is more friction involved in bringing in the NX packages like NX React because this plugin requires that you add additional config into your workspace and your projects that use this plugin have to be organized in a specific kind of way. So what we saw was the sort of divide between what we called NX integrated workspaces and NX package based workspaces, where package bases, you've pretty much installed just the NX core package and integrated. You're not only using the core package, you're also using all of our plugins. This is something that we want to change drastically in 2024. And we've got a huge release planned in February, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But the goals here is number one, we're going to go almost completely configuration less while still giving you access to override defaults when you need to. And number two, we're going to make it much more easy to drop in our NX plugins to any kind of workspace. And hopefully this will remove the gap between integrated and package-based workspaces completely. We're super excited about this, so keep your eyes peeled for the launch. As far as 17.2 goes, you can see that a lot of the work that we've done to make this possible has actually landed here by 17.2. However, we're hiding this behind a feature flag for now so that we can release this all next month when it's ready. All right, so the next section we really want to highlight in this video is staring us in the face on the front page of nx.dev. The whole front page got a huge facelift here. We'll cover that more in another section. But for right now, I really want to focus on this line right here, built with Rust for speed and TypeScript for its testability. Now from the beginning, NX was built with TypeScript and we have generally been really happy with that decision. TypeScript has massive adoption, which makes it a great candidate for making a tool that a lot of devs want to use. However, there's one place that TypeScript kind of falls down and that's in speed. So over the last year, what we've been doing is converting a lot of NX's core, in particular, the computationally expensive pieces of that core. We've been converting those to Rust. And this has been really successful. Here's a video that Victor posted a while back for parsing TypeScript imports to build a project graph. And we can see here that Rust is actually two times faster in terms of being able to analyze the TypeScript dependencies. So that's really cool. And in terms of 17.2, what we've done is we've landed a task hasher that has been converted to Rust. So if you're watching this and you want to take advantage of the new speed increase, all you need to do is upgrade NX to 17.2. NX is going to start using Rust for the task hasher, and you're going to get a little bit faster without you having to change anything. So great success. All right, so next up is a series of enhancements to module federation. Now, if you're not familiar with module federation, module federation is a feature of Webpack which allows you to deploy and consume modules independently. What this means is you can separate out a front end project into separate modules and then have a host application which consumes these modules and you can deploy each one of those modules independently of the others. As you can imagine, this is a great fit for monorepos where the whole concept is that you're going to host several projects inside of one repository. This is very similar to what we'd be doing with module federation in terms of separating out modules. So there's an obvious affinity between NX workspaces and module federation. And prior to these updates, NX already had ways of creating a starter host application as well as remote applications for that host to consume. However, what we've landed in NX 17.2 is more enhancements on top of that, including when you're working in development mode. What we saw was when you were watching a lot of these remotes at the same time, your computer would usually tend to slow down because you're hosting so many web servers on your one machine. 
one of the enhancements we've done here is to take all of your remotes and host them onto one web server while you're in development mode, while still allowing you to deploy them anywhere you want when it's time to deploy. Hopefully when you're developing with Module Federation, this will make your computer not sound like it's taking off into space. Additionally, we brought in the concept of dynamic federation, which is allowing your host to specify via a manifest file where all of your remotes live, and we brought that to our React plugin, whereas prior, this was only available inside of our NX Angular plugin. If you want to use Dynamic Federation in your projects, all you have to do is use this dynamic flag when you run your generator to create your host. And then when you want to load something from your remote module, all you have to do is use this load remote module provided by our NX React plugin. And last up, we have an example available on GitHub where you can see us using module federation using a Vite plugin inside of your NX projects. We're still experimenting with the capabilities here, but if this catches your imagination, be sure to check out the example repo, and this could result in some interesting things in the future. Up next is a new programmatic API for our NX release command. We've released a new command to the NX CLI called NX release that became available last year. Now, if you want to use NX release via the CLI, we have these subcommands NX release version, which will let you version all of your projects, NX release change log, which will let you make a change log of your projects, and then NX release publish, which is going to publish all of your projects. However, now we have a programmatic API where you can import each one of these as a function from NX release. Here we see a very simple implementation of this where we're calling first release version and then release changelog and then release publish in sequence inside of a single script. This way, instead of using the NX CLI to individually call three different release subcommands, we can instead use the command line to use node to run this one single script. And that should do all three of those things via one command. So while this is a very specific example to accommodate specifically a minor release, you can obviously do a lot of things with this new programmatic API in terms of maybe creating your own scripts with your own options that you can then pass through to the core functions here provided by NX release. And this way you can craft your own release script that can do pretty much anything you want. All right, so up next is Angular. So Angular has been having a huge renaissance lately. We've got a new home here for Angular. This is angular.dev. It features their new logo and branding here. And now this release coincided with Angular Major version 17. So as of NX 17.1, NX has supported this new major version of Angular. If you want to migrate any existing NX Angular project to version 17, all you have to do is run the NX migrate command to the latest NX version, and you should be able to upgrade all of your Angular projects to the latest Angular major version, now Angular 17. Also specifically for Angular, if you want to migrate to the latest version of NX, but you're not ready to go to the most recent version of Angular yet, you can use the dash dash interactive flag when using the NX migrate command. As we can see here, this is what you're going to see in your terminal when you run this. You'll be prompted as to whether you want to upgrade TypeScript, as to whether you want to upgrade Angular, and based on your responses here, NX is going to only migrate the pieces that you want. This is particularly helpful if you have a very large application, you're not really ready to change any of your runtime dependencies. You just want to upgrade the core of NX without actually changing the projects that you're working on to use actual runtime dependencies. Now next up, as I alluded to earlier, we gave the nx.dev homepage a fresh new coat of paint. Our main tagline now is smart mono repos and fast CI. As we scroll down here, we can see that we have a huge focus now on our CI, including our CI capabilities like NX Replay, NX Agents, and NX Workflows. Really one of the cool things about NX is if you really buy into NX, you're pretty much building a task pipeline that you can easily pass into any CI system and just run your CI there without really having to think about specifically what commands you need to run in terms of running your CI. NX already has generators for you to be able to run a simple command to take your current NX workspace and have it ready to go for most of the more popular CI providers like CircleCI and GitHub Actions. And with NX agents, we're entering into this very same CI space, but in a way that can be even more tailored to your workspace. And one of the coolest things about this is as your workspace expands, your CI is really just going to expand right along with it. And it already has the tools to be able to see as you're adding new projects, where those projects fit in terms of your workspace's project graph, how those projects depend on each other, 
And we can pass this information directly into your CI provider so that we can cut out commands you shouldn't need to run based on your Git commits and also use products like NX Replay to make sure that if you've ever run this command before, then you shouldn't need to run it again in CI because we should be able to just replay that task from NX Cloud. All right, last but definitely not least, we have the new concept of Canary releases that we've added to our publishing suite on NPM. Now, previously, we had a previous tag that would point to the last major releases, most recent tag, a latest tag that would point to the current major releases, most recent tag, and a next tag that would point to the beta or release candidate of any upcoming minor release that was coming up. Now we also have the concept of a canary release that is going to be created via a cron job. If you want to see the details of how we're doing this, you can just check out our repo on GitHub. And you can see here's the schedule we're going to create our new canary releases on. So pretty much we're going to release this every weekday sometime around midnight for all of you in our American time zones. You can go ahead and install the Canary version of NX now if you want, and you can use this to preview any new X features that haven't been officially released yet. In particular, if you're contributing to NX yourself and you have a PR that merged but hasn't been included in a cut release yet, you can try it out inside of the Canary release on the next day to make sure that whatever PR that you submitted is working properly. Whew. So that's it for 17.2. Like I said, there was a lot of stuff here. So if you have any questions, be sure to check out our live stream tomorrow with Yuri and a lot of folks from our NX core team. They'll be there to answer any questions you have, as well as to go over all of the new stuff that has come out since NX 17 and look ahead to some of the cool stuff coming in the future. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up that will be released in February. So keep an eye out for all those announcements. Thanks for sticking around to go over all these cool new features with me. We really love all the things that we see the community doing with this. Keep working hard and we'll see y'all next time. Peace.